Hi folks, this is Cutting Through the Matrix and we're going through some some past history to show you that there's an agenda and they test things out and then they bring it back in a more perfected manner for the whole populations, especially with television now and the internet and so on. It's all out there for everyone and, and, and they're into the schools of course getting into the children's minds very early to tell them how to be and not to be inhibited about anything and just go along with the flow, you see. And we're watching this play out in society as they put the, la- the last nails in the coffin are actually in as far as I'm concerned. But they've been in for quite some time because it's called contamination and that's what the communists used this term. Uh, they were the first to use it, contamination, when their ideologies and the symptoms would, be show- would show up in society uh, of deviancies and so on being promoted via the media and, and actually celebrated by the media at times. And it's called contamination under the guise of liberalism. We're all there now. Everyone's been contaminated to some extent for a long time. I also touched on the Brain series to show you. It's quite interesting, too, the the BBC series. I mentioned that a week or two ago. And um, it's presented by a lifer. I call them lifers at the BBC. That's a a job for life. And his job, Mr. Moses' life, is to... Uh, be a rah-rah cheerleader for all scientific exploration into people, the brain, and all the rest of it. Uh, he, I think he started studying psychology. I don't know if he dropped out, but then he went to work. And strangely enough, these careers, these guys like Mr. Mosley, he went off to work as a banker in the city of London, then stopped that and came back to work for the BBC. So he's got a mission there, obviously. And you'll hear him look at some of these experiments. And these are just little clips, by the way, unfortunately, from the series, not the whole series, I think each one was an hour long, but little clips to show you what he was into and how he presents things to the public. And he loved Pavlov like they all do. Uh, And I've mentioned before how Pavlov uh, experimented not just on dogs by shocking them and and being cruel and then destroying them, of course, uh, but then passion, of course, no no passion whatsoever, Uh, just clinical interest, like a lizard staring at you. And... um, and he wanted to be very famous, of course, like they all do. But you'll hear this Mr. Mosley justify after seeing what's terrible, what happened and some of the experiments. And believe me, the experiments he's touching on are just the, a few of the more tamer types, believe it or not. But he, 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 uh, he says, but it's good for medical. We, 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 we achieve so much knowledge from these experiments, even the ones with depriving monkeys from their mothers, etc. Put them in a hole for a year and then watching to see what kind of neurotic they had created. He thought it was all worth it in the long run. He also himself goes through on the series, the whole series, you'll see him going into an MRI machine in Holland. Uh, where obviously something for the government is at play there from one of the, the, the higher services because you don't get an MRI machine to test the occasional person for a psychology. It's awfully expensive. But anyway, he gets tested in there and asks certain questions and so on, and he actually scores within the psychopathic range himself. So he's ideally suited for his job and the BBC as Mr. Mosley. So I'll put the clip on, and one of them is Pavlov's children because I mentioned before that Pavlov actually... Um, it didn't use simply dogs. He also did the same experiments by putting holes in the necks of children to collect their saliva, tying them down, strapping them down, and then training them to, to open their mouths when a little bell would ring and out would pop a little biscuit into their mouth. Uh, a very nice character he was. He ranks alongside Mengele and many others, and the psychologists just love him for his dedication to his work. So I'll put that up and a few other ones, a few other clips from the main series tonight and grab them because they'll probably get pulled pretty quickly, no doubt. So that's what we're living through. As I say, we're living through a a hell in a sense. It's a planned hell with the the use of psychology and um, very high sciences and also engineering is going on with it too. Electrical engineering have gone through the harp technology, the frequencies, etc., I was listening to them today again on the short wave, and they're still booming out. They called it the woodpecker uh, sound. I put up the links to the 85 CNN series on on this technology. You'll hear the harp there, 
And you can actually still hear the exact same thing going on all throughout the day on different bands or different frequencies within the shortwave radio. And that's where they first picked it up in the West was on shortwave radio. Still going strong, been going strong since 2001, 24 hours around the clock. The very technique that uh, Kissinger uh, Brzezinski was uh, touching on in his book Between Two Ages when he said that this technology could be used across whole continents either to make people aggressive or uh, quieten them down, make them placid, and they can actually make you very stupid as well. So they're using this technology today, and I don't need someone to to tell me they're not because I, I, I know what the harp sounds, sounds like. I've got the evidence of the old recordings put out by governments, and I've got the identical things showing up on shortwave today. It's the same thing, same thing. I mentioned yesterday, too, about the Solomon uh, Ar- Ash, his name is ESCH, uh, studies in conformity. And uh, it's so interesting to, to again, this is very low-level stuff that they'd, they were doing in the 1950s, because the whole point, it wasn't just to find out how people conform, it's, it's they want people to conform, you understand, and so they can update you all at the same time. That's why they give you celebrities and stars to follow, because you see, they found in these experiments, in the Ashes experiments, they found that uh, the one person who didn't know uh, there was a scam going on, would go along with the group, maybe four or five, maybe 14 people who were all in on the scam. He was the only real test subject there, and he would conform to the bizarreness of the answers that they went along with. Back with more after this break. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Because you can handle the truth. Hi folks, this is Cutting Through the Matrix, talking about mind control tonight, just a little little bit and touching on it, it's only scraping the surface, you can't do much in an hour, certainly not in any depth, and certainly not in any educational capacity, but all you can do is is give out stuff that's already out there, of course, what's out to the public is always low level and generally obsolete, They're, they're way beyond whatever they tell you, even when exposed on the news, and I mentioned the CNN program, and I put the links up last night too, uh, from 1985 on advanced weaponry. They talked about Tesla technology, stuff that was produced at the beginning of the 20th century, and how that could affect people's minds too. And then it went through the whole the whole thing to do with the Riga um, antennas that they put up, the Soviets put up, we were putting up the, the woodpecker technology, and, uh, and so on and so on. And in America too, they were doing the same thing, actually. Because they shared the secrets, because every year I say, wonder why would, if you were such enemies with your enemy over there, uh, why would you send um, all your top scientists across there every year for international science meetings, especially when they kept saying that those with the best science would win this Cold War? made no sense to me. And then I knew, well, they're all in it together. They're sharing their data. And, and that's what really was happening. The Cold War was literally uh, the, the excuse to tax the people into research and to find all the technology that's now being used against you today. And again, the Rees Commission in the 1950s talked about blending the Soviet system with that of the West. That was a job of the big foundations that came out in official inquiry that was, that was signed off by the Congress. So we're experiencing it now. Now, in the 1985 uh, series from CNN on a lot of this experimentation of microwave radiation and different kinds of pulsating radiation, magnetic radiation, and so on. It says this, it says, um, and Delgado, he's talking to, Bill Del, the interview is talking to Delgado, who was involved in MK Ultra. He worked for the Pentagon. He did work with the FBI and CIA. He was all, he's the guy who famously put in the implant in the bull's head, had it charge him, and then switched on his little remote and had the thing stop in its tracks. And this is what he says here because he was a real fanatic into this area of controlling human populations and mind control. 
Uh, Delgado it says, by connecting a radio antenna to electrodes inserted into the bull's brain, Delgado proved the animal's aggressive impulses could be thwarted by electronically manipulating the bull's muscle reflexes. And then Delgado says here, replied, this is on the, the, the this is the, the text from the actual uh, show. It says, do you realize the fantastic possibilities if from the outside we could modify the inside? Could we give messages to the inside? That's the inside the brain. But the beauty is that now we are not using electrodes. They already had the techniques back then and I've gone through the, the Corbin helmet that was used in Canadian universities here and psychology experiments and they can actually stroke the brain with uh, very low level magnetic pulses. You see, your electric pulses in the body don't work on high uh, ele- electricity, high voltage or high amperage. It's tiny, it's tiny, it's minute. And, it's, and when you get the right frequencies and it's minute enough, you can actually affect the way the brain works. And they could, they found out they could stimulate, and I've got that in the archive section too, uh, they could stimulate, um, the feelings and experiences you'd have, uh, from LSD, for instance, you'd have the same kind of trip, and uh, it was done by stroking the brain. And isn't that interesting? It ties in uh, with uh, the article I read about a year ago, where Google was talking about their experimental departments working on a helmet that stroked the brain. They could literally read your brain for you personally, find out how you reacted to games, just to get the children involved, of course, and it's so innocent too. The parents don't get involved. That's just the children playing. Meanwhile, their brains are being mapped and then the thing adapts to the brain of that child. We can also, conversely, uh, start manipulating parts of those, the brain where it knows, uh, where it knows things will certainly happen and manipulate the behavior of that child. Don't forget it's a two-way street here. Don't forget that for a minute. And at the same time, they also talked about, there's another department on Google was working on, or is Microsoft working on, uh, one that didn't need a helmet. They would build the antenna basically into the frame of the, of the screen in the computer, and that would be able to hit you from a, quite a few feet away, maybe across the room for all I know, and same technology. So it's out there, folks. And remember, as I keep telling you, the computer is put out there by the military-industrial complex. It's an essential, if not the key, the key essential to this whole, what we now call the New World Order. It's essential. You couldn't get this whole world under surveillance and everything else without it. But this article goes on to say, In recent years, Delgado, this is back in the 80s, had shown that the behavior of monkeys can be altered using low-power pulsing magnetic fields. But in these experiments, there were no antenna implants. Delgado says, Any function, the brain, emotions, intellect, personality, uh, could we perhaps modify by this non-invasive technology? Delgado's research has so far been limited to animals. That's not true, because they always give you this guff when they give something out to the public, as they did with Pavlov. As I say, this link up up tonight, have a look at Pavlov's children and see what you think of that. Because they said about the same thing about him for 70 years. Oh, he just experimented on animals. You know. Anyway, it says, when the Soviet Union, a radio frequency or RF device has been used for over 30 years to manipulate the moods of mental patients. It's called a LIDA machine. It radiates pulses of radio frequency energy as well as light, sound, and heat. The pulse rate is in the extremely low frequency range between 0 and 100 pulses per second. Dr. Ross Eddy is a top researcher at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Loma Linda, California. He's been investigating the effects of the LIDAR machine there on, on the ex-vex, right? That's what, that's what they do. They use these, these uh, vets at hospitals for practicing and, and experimenting on. It says here, now what do the Soviets use the machine for? And Eddy says, well, they don't use it anymore. We should be very clear that this is a machine that's regarded by them as somewhat obsolete technologically. Isn't that amazing, eh? It made the children very placid, you see. They didn't give them amphetamine like they do here if they're a bit active, like boys always are. They use the machines on them. It says, the scientist who didn't want his identity revealed is employed by the U.S. government has done and has done secret RF weapons research. He believes that tests done with ELIDA are similar and similar machines prove that humans are susceptible to remote alterations of mood and awareness. The same stuff that Brzezinski was talking about that could be used across whole continents. Remember that. Always remember.